Behavioral Model Meeting today, June 30th. And it looks like we have quite a few people here. I'm going to turn off my camera. And so what I'm displaying on my screen is one of the items we wanted to uh, bring over to the behavioral model meeting this week. Um, we had talked about um, black box versus white box testing for uh, TCP state machine, I believe it was, and we indicated that we would discuss that here. And so I added a added a tracking item here just in my cheat sheet of things we need to work on. And so maybe we could start off that conversation. I think that uh, Marian had indicated we, we don't really have APIs to do this and um, it, it might be difficult per hardware supplier, if I remember. Is that correct, guys? Is that where we left it off last time? Oh, I just mean there is some work to do. Uh, yeah. It's not really difficult, but it's time consuming. Uh, but I don't see Gerald on the call before oh, uh, trying to talk about APIs. I would okay. want to know the requirements. OK, OK, so he just in turned green. He just turned green in um, teams, so that means he's usually getting ready to join. So I guess we could I'll do a request to join here. Oops, John's here. It looks like we have a couple of other people joining. So hi, hi guys who just joined. Um, we started started maybe talking about white box versus black box testing, and we thought we might wait for Gerald since this was more of his question before we got further into it. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, other, while we're waiting, can you guys see the, when I'm displaying this screen right here, do you see the dash P4 behavioral model or am I only sharing the OneNote? Hello, somebody's car. I can <laughs> see the project view. You can? Okay. All right. Hi, Poria. We can see you in the car. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Great. So, and um, there is also one item that is not tracked here uh, that okay. I want to bring up. Okay. If we'll have time. No, let, um, we can do it now if you like. Oh, OK. Um, one second. I'll share my screen. OK. So I have submitted a new pull request to update uh, the behavioral model. And okay. I will explain in a minute what the change is all about. So let me share the screen. So as you are probably all aware, we have uh, the dash device is direction aware. We have outbound direction when the VM is sending a packet and inbound when the packet is received to the particular ENI slash VM. And on the inbound direction, our, let's say, final goal is to find out what is the receiving VM's public address and do VXLAN encapsulation and send the packet to it. So before what we had was that we had an indirection uh, of virtual machine. And this virtual <coughs> machine had um, an attribute of the public address. So basically the mapping was that we previously found out what ENI we are sending to, and we have a mapping table from ENI to virtual machine, and then virtual machine will give us uh, the public address. Under the destination IP plus VNI. Uh, so from what we saw when we were reviewing the sonic design is that there is no notion of virtual machine um, controller operates um, and 
probably this is even better because we have less indirections and it doesn't uh, really break anything. Uh, controller simply operates with ENIs and every ENI has its own uh, public address. So let me show you that as well. So if you go to the Sonic design, there is ENI table in the configuration over here, and it has the underlay IP. Um, so what we want to do is to align behavioral model with this design and uh, move underlay IP. So we want to remove those two tables completely, mapping to the virtual machine, and simply put uh, underlay IP and uh, VXLAN VNI that is supposed to be uh, the packet is supposed to be encapsulated with VXLAN header. Uh, just move it directly to uh, to ENI table, like over here. So we have our ENI table, and those two attributes now belong to um, now belong to ENI uh, itself. So this is the change. It's not really change in the behavior. Like packet in and packet out will look the same for every packet in, uh, that, that you can come up with, but we're just removing this indirection, making less configuration flows, less, uh, uh, less entities, less dependencies that we uh, need to track. So kind of like uh, flattened uh, this a little bit. So this is the description of the change. It's in this pull request, and I saw Chris ask me to merge it uh after after uh, chris uh, do you mean this is your ci yeah so yeah uh, it was merged this morning just a while ago but um debugging there's a problem in the pipeline mm -hmm. which proved its value <laughs> you know we, we did a pull request and the first ci run exposed a couple issues which i'm fixing right now i think shortly after the meeting i should be able to fix it all right uh okay so um for anyone interested please review number 137 so that this is the change yeah, this is good yeah thanks uh, marian for doing that i think this actually aligns with now what the schema is from the configuration yeah, yeah. point of view so it's much more easier to you know um view it and then uh, much more easier to really put these things together right there is a lot of alignment now so thank you No other questions? No, um, and I noticed Andy came on the line, so so there's no P4 meeting next Monday, is there, Andy? I think I uh, saw 4th of July not, cancel. Because, yeah, for, yeah, 4th of July, and then the following Monday after that, there's a P4 language design work group meeting, which a lot of there's a lot of overlap and people interested, so the next public PNA meeting is the July 18th. And as far as the issue with ROOP, uh, and I, I think uh, we're all you but guys figured it out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think we're all but done on that one. I just need to merge it in and and uh, after a final review. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. No, thanks, Rup. Yep. Okay, great. So, hey so we have... oh, hey, Gerald. Hi. Uh, we were just going over a pull request from Marian to uh, place two attributes into a different table. Not not anything that you really missed there. So. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. We were also talking about the topic from last week where we wanted to move the conversation around um, black box and white box testing over to the behavioral model meeting. And the guys here wanted to wait for you to join so we could have your opinion as well. And so mm -hmm. let me share my screen. Um, so yeah, this is this is what we had talked about last time guys, and we, we thought we'd talk about the discussion here. Um, and Marian mentioned that um, although we don't have APIs, what did you say, Marian? It's not difficult, but it's time consuming? Well, let's maybe start the discussion yeah, with the requirements. OK. So TCP state machine testing, so. 
Yeah, I want to be able to read the state of the connection. So when we write our functional tests, which are quite slow, we want to see that what's happening from the TCP state point of view. And so don't really expect this to be something you're trying to pull like real time when you're doing millions of connections per second because you wouldn't get anything out of that. But when we're doing functional testing, we want to be able to test this. Now, is, is that background noise? Someone's doing weed whacking at my house. Is that bothering anyone? Or should I go on mute while you guys talk? Or We don't, we, we don't hear it. You don't hear it? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's talk about it, guys. <clears throat> And um, about, so the state should be per connection. Uh, the, another question I have, um, how will, uh, do we assume that we know the five tuple? Um, or is it something that also um, API should provide like a uh, notification about what five tuples are learned and then we will go over them or do we assume that the test will know what five tuple it is interested in and it will tell exactly i'm interested in this uh flow so give me its state is well, that the that's, assumption that's more realistic because when we're doing testing we know what we're sending in we know the five tuples we're just trying to check the so we expect that connection to be in some kind of state depending on what we just sent so we would be saying, I want to see the state for this five tuple. Yes. I, I, I don't need to. I don't need to do a walk of the table. It could be like way too many. You just like a a a five tuple. I want to see the state connection state of that UDP or TCP. In fact, <clears throat> whatever we decide for UDP. That way, when we're doing functional testing, we can we can get a much better clear understanding of, of the different implementations and what's happening and that um, <clears throat> that the behavioral model tcp state machine whatever it ends up being uh is being followed not some something completely different are, are we saying we need to read the right one of the right uh, the correct table in the p4 pipeline uh, that you, is you should have a you should have a connection in your uh, the fast path table, right? You have a connection. Yeah. In that connection, you have to be holding stuff. I mean, you have pointers to the mappings. You have pointers to the to to the output interface. You have you have in in that you have counters, whatever. But you should also have the TCP state there too. I mean, that where else would you keep it? Yeah, so that's what I'm. Tra I'm trying to simplify it. Or I'm trying to map it to a, a P4 table read. That way, maybe if we are maintaining them, anything visible to the P4 program, uh, uh, and then if you are able to read them through reading P4 tables, are we are we solving it? And yeah, just trying that, to simplify it. And Pat, let me catch you up a little bit from last week. I think on this, um, if I may. So. Gerald posited that we, we ought to be able to read the state, you know, exercise this TCP state machine through its paces, you know, at a controlled way, kind of like a white box test. And then we read back the state. We didn't get into how that'll be done. Um, and what we are talking about is maybe how, but we did talk yeah. about the need for an API in which yeah. you can read the state. The implementation yeah, is exactly. irrelevant, although we would have to solve that too, right? So that's kind of like the first thing is, do we agree that we have a state-by-state -state way of exercising and confirming? So it's a white boxed observation. Then we would decide how do we do that? And you know, is there a Psi API that's just handwritten that says, read me the state? Or do we use P4 code to model the observability of the TCB state and auto-generate the header? Both of those are, option, are, are options, right? And um, Marian has already taken some steps and we'll be doing additional handwritten Psi APIs 
where in which case in those cases where the P4 code doesn't express, for example, in the Sci API query, that's like an out of band kind of a API that you have to hand write. It doesn't come out of the P4 code. The, the TCP state machine read might be another handwritten API if there's no P4 model of that. If you don't try to impose on the model, you can read the state. That makes it tricky to model in BMB too, right? So we'll have to sort that out, I think. But there is a TCP state uh, model uh, that they have in P4, right? That's what Monsanto originally offered and people are contributing to. So we, why wouldn't we be able to, why could it not auto-generate the API? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think what you want is something a little bit more generic where you want to, I mean, in a way, in the code, the state is implicit. While you want to have it explicit and you don't want to constrain the, constrain the implementations to, to follow uh, the behavioral model. No, we <laughs> do want them to, they don't have to implement the behavioral model like that, but we do want them to have the exact same behavior of the TCP state machine that we are defining in the behavioral model. Only way I can yes. see that is, I mean, if, whether it's auto-generated um, because they have a different kind of model or not, it still has to have the same behavior. So um, I don't care how you do it. But I do care that in the end, that everybody's TCP, uh, risk, you know, behavior is the same, and as defined in the model that we're defining in the behavior model. I can kind of try to do that from the outside, but I would rather be able to, as I stimulate it, know that they're going through the states. Because that way we can make corrections and we can tell everybody about those corrections, et cetera. Otherwise, it's just us finding out peculiarities of every single design that don't behave the same way, that sort of behave, but they don't, and they miss the states or whatever. We don't get the shared learnings out of it other way. It'd probably be good at this point to just query the community, the implementers. And let's not worry about the BMV2 part yet. Uh, on a real implementation, is there going to be a technical or performance burden to do this, or is it just a little bit of plumbing and API work? You know, we should we should have a reality checker to make sure it's like, oh no, this has massive implications on a production version, for example. You know, does anyone have any opinion on that? Any of the vendors? Just so we don't ivory tower ourselves into a corner. Yeah. So we have, you know. Bud from Excite Labs maybe could let us know, or um, you know, Mario, or maybe Lisa from Broadcom, um, or Hanif. Feel free to let us know, guys. Here. Hey, Christina. Hey, this is Bud. Hey. Uh, so, a couple thoughts. Um, I can see pros and cons of both approaches to testing the black box and the white box. Um, with the white box testing that we're talking about. Um, there may be some timing concerns where, you know, when these flows get installed, um, they'll change state after like a few seconds or maybe more than a few seconds, depending on the configuration. Um, we would need to um, ensure that if we send a packet or a series of packets to try to create a certain state, um, that the APIs that would go and query that state can actually retrieve it before the state expires. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. Where with a black box test, you would just shoot like a series of packets at the target, and um, the that the timing is not really an issue for that type of testing. Um, but like with the well crafted packet, after I mean, sorry. Let me take a step back. So you'd send a bunch of packets to get the flow table into a certain state, and then you'd send a couple packets like immediately afterwards. Maybe one you expect to drop, another expect not to drop, and you would 
verify the state based on that. Um, uh, do you think if, if there were programmable timers for the various aging mechanisms, that that could be part of the test controller to say, we'll make this timer long enough so that we don't have any race conditions? Or yeah, is sure. Another, yeah. Is that another burden or that just be kind of an, a, a, a low hanging fruit way of doing it? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if what we're trying to do is test to make sure we transition to certain states, then I think that's possible. Then you could just make the timers very long and it doesn't really matter. Um, we're not talking about throughput or. Um, but that's correct. And that's the only thing I'm trying to get out of this is that to test that they properly implemented that state mission. And you would write the test. It's a functional test. It would not be throughput or anything, right? You use black box testing for that. So, so I think the original question was, will it cause detriment on the hardware, the DPU, by doing this? It sounds like maybe no, I, because it's I really only slow testing anyway. Yeah, we won't have a problem with that. I don't think that should, yeah. That, it really shouldn't be, and it would never be used. You wouldn't use this on a live unit in right. the field. This is, you would get junk out, right? Because things yeah. just change so fast. You'd only be using this for, for correctness testing. And so it, it's, the performance is not what we're after there. You're just after uh, doing functional tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure I'm just wondering. Even instrumenting the implementation to do this, even if you only use it in testing slowly, would that act of instrumenting it cause a burden in production code or would it need to be like a build option? Because, you know, if there's things like synchronization mechanisms that could, um, you know, artificial ones for this testing that could then burden the production code. That's just, you just gotta well, make I, haven't sure heard, we I haven't heard anybody say that. In fact, uh, Excite just said no. So I, okay. I don't see any reason why that would be. If somebody does have a concern, they should express it and why that they can't do this. Yeah. That's, it's just, that's a table. It's just a, a field in a table, right? Well, reading that field has to be instrumented. So I'm just giving people a chance to raise their hand. I'm, I'm trying to understand, guys, you know, the, the requirements. Sorry, um, this is probably I'm a little slow on this one. But if you if you're trying to um, you know find out the, the current state of a connection which hasn't really completely come up right because generally what happens is that you know if if the if there is a if you're looking for a flow and if the flow uh, is a is a mess then essentially it is it is still is it's in the connection tracking um I guess that state all, that all happens no? in nanoseconds. You don't take it's not seconds to build a flow. It's nanoseconds, microseconds, small, like less than one microsecond. The, if you send a SYN packet, it opens up a connection in that table as soon as that SYN packet is ar arrives. And then it just it just follows state until it closes that connection, which is far down the line when you receive all six packets or some timeout. It's not something that happens slowly. I mean, the mm -hmm. the, the connection is made immediately. Correct. On so then, then essentially, what you are trying to trying to really track is the flow table, right? The state in the flow table. Yes, and then okay. uh, w once a connection is, uh, you know, is, is created, it has to hold the TCP state. Otherwise, like there's, it has to, right? Uh, there's no other way of doing that. I can't keep it in the top. So given that it has to have that state in order for it to implement the state transitions, we should be able to read it. And that's all I'm saying. And that every time I send a packet, I don't even need to wait. That within nanoseconds, that state will have been updated. It's not something that happens later unless, unless there's an, a timeout, which is true. So and that we can test for it too. It's like, oh yeah, exit that state because yeah, it entered, but then two seconds later it exited for because one of the timers went off. That's good, and and we would be able to to uh, look at that transition as well. Yeah, it shouldn't be hard to, to be able to read states down in the you know milliseconds or tens of milliseconds kind of timing in in a typical unit test. These things run pretty quickly. Um, so I, I think we'll be able to measure actual timer operation with some fidelity too. Yeah. Sounds I, like we, I, 
go ahead. I'll say just for the record, if, if 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 people implementing this this observability run into issues or performance or interference is a concern with the production version, they should consider a, a build option for white box testing versus production and just kind of even escape hatch there. So yeah, it's, it's not something we could use in production for sure, so that you could use that because in production, connections are happening so fast, by the time you went to read something, it can be gone, right? I mean, maybe you could control that because you have one flow that you're operating really slowly, so you can actually do that, but the reality is that this is something that you would only be using in regression testing, nightly builds, um, and to allow the tests themselves to even be graded properly. Yeah, sounds good to me. Hey, Gerald, uh, question. Um, when we are going to query the state of a flow in the flow table, are we looking to see uh, just one of two possibilities, like the flow is established or not? Or is the intent to look at all the like, like partially established states as well? Of par yeah, partial, all the states of the TCP state machine that are being defined in the P4 pipeline. Yeah. Okay. Which, which closely mimic what's published in TCP documents, um, but but it will be whatever we decide the TCP state machine is for this this box. But yeah, I want to see all the intermediate states. Okay. Uh, sounds like we've kind of closed on that. Um, and maybe we could go back to requirements then, um, if that's what we need to do, Marion. No, the requirements are clear. Requirements are clear. We don't think it's going to affect. Okay. So, Chris, uh, can, do you think we can consider the topic closed and we can move forward? Yeah, I mean, now it's implementation, right? We have to define the APIs and the implementation in the P4 model, but Sounds like there's a consensus that this is a requirement. That's good. That's the hard part. Thanks, everybody. That's awesome. Um, and thanks for coming, Gerald, to to walk us through your opinions on that. Um, if you if you guys can see my screen, maybe we can shift topics here. Um, we did get a couple more things done here in our list of uh, items to work on. So thank you for that. And I believe we did split out the IPv6 ACL into a different issue. I think we talked about that already. Um, we moved a couple of things to 75% complete. I've changed dependency here. Like this one in particular is dependent on P4 community. This one's dependent on side thrift server, um, that kind of thing. So maybe we could, does anyone have an update on their item? I'll go by owner here. So we were going to check back on June 30th for this one. Um, Marion told me privately in a separate meeting what was going on with this this one here, but maybe we could talk about it here, Marion. Um, yeah, so. Unfortunately, I don't have the ETA yet because Roop was preoccupied with the PNA. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I will be able provide it, uh, to provide it next week. So probably I will update the project myself. Okay, and so um, you know, next next week we're probably out because of yeah, that's the why I'm saying I will I, I will so. update due date myself in the project. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry, I'll just edit them. Great, that sounds great. And what other ones were we gonna, this one we're gonna check back on July 14. The cool one. Okay, um, I think we've helped Kasim with this one. Kasim, did you get the fork you needed? Yeah, it has merged already. Yeah, okay, we merged that, great. All right, so did anyone feel like we needed to add new work items to the backlog? We we added this routing type VNet direct uh, with Marion in a different meeting on Monday. And if there's 
anything someone wants to pick up here? Yeah, I, can, I want to take number three. I, I, we, I, whatever I have, I still need to test it. Once the test framework is uh, the CACD stabilized, I need to test, but uh, that's a few lines that are already checked in. So you can assign number three to me. Yeah, I will. I have to, I don't want to bore you with the details, but I have to convert it to an issue and assign it to yeah, you. So I'll just put that yeah. there for now. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then um, IPv6 IP option extension headers support that. And I think that um, Mario told me he was working on this open contrail um, work here. Yes, yes, I am very slowly. Unfortunately, I apologize, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm doing a little bit of headway. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there's something you need help with, maybe we could get a volunteer for you from here. Well, I mean, I I think it's a bit tough to have multiple people working on this. Okay. It's not much code. It's really just. Uh, um, but yeah. Okay. Let, let's see. Maybe let's 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 wait until uh, well next week we are not going to meet. But the following week, if I'm okay. not done by then, then maybe if someone else wants to. Okay. Call Help out. Okay. Great. Uh, does anyone else have an update on their items? Okay. And I think I mentioned in a different meeting. I'm. Uh, tracking other work here for the overall Dash community, and then I can move these items into the different projects as I need to. So, okay, that's all I have. Uh, anyone else? Hello. Hello. Hi, Sab. Uh, yes, uh, Christina, uh, I, I have a question. So sure. There was this task um, about IPv6 so options. Header. Where are you yeah. from, Saad? Where are you from? I, I work, I am a colleague of Kasim. I work with him oh, on awesome. list, match, list and match type task. Oh, Green Big uh, Semi. Okay, nice yeah. to meet you. Great. Uh, nice to see you likewise. So uh, there's this task about IPv6 uh, options. I think it's item number uh, six. Yeah. Uh, can you, uh, de uh, can someone detail out uh, what this task entails? Yes. Um, so I made a quick note. Uh, currently, we don't support it. We may have to start with static size IP option headers for V6. Uh, really, that's the the extent of my knowledge. Can can someone else chime in here? Currently, we do not support uh, what. <laughs> I mean, IPv6 is not currently Mar supported. Marian, can you help me out here a little bit? Actually, I'm not familiar with this one. Huh. I didn't define it. IPv6 IP option extension headers. Well, we threw it in here. We may have to start with static size. Hmm. Well, I think what this is saying is that we are currently in the behavioral model. We are not currently supporting the headers besides the basic one. In IPv6, there is a basic header, and then there can be extensions. And I think currently we are not. We don't have the code to process extensions. Yeah, I think it should be basically, you know, for both V4 and V6. V4 has extensions, but V6 has multiple headers, right? So you have stack of headers and so forth. Yeah. So so in 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 both V4 and V6, we just are are not really handling anything besides just a plain vanilla, you know, header. So. Okay, so this task means uh, supporting extension headers mm -hmm. besides the basic header in behavioral model. I would I would think so, yeah. So okay. it, it, it should basically try to cover both V4 extension as well as the multiple headers in the V6. Thanks, guys, for the and, assist uh, there. Uh, does this task also uh, involve uh, can connection tracking work? I mean, while we are adding extension header support, will we also have to take care of uh, uh, things related to connection tracking? No, I think it's orthogonal uh, because uh, IP v6 or v4 is connectionless. Whether you have optional headers, uh, or, you know, options in the IP v4 or extension headers in the IP v6 in IP v6, it's it's just that we are not currently 
able to parse them and, and process them. So, you know, if you have a routing header, we are not looking at it. I, I actually, I don't think only we are not looking at it. I'm not sure we are skipping it and going to the TCP. I think if we get a packet with an extension, we may not be able to process it. I'm not sure about what I'm saying. We would need to check the code, but that's what that PR is saying. Someone checked and they realized that we do not support them currently. Okay, oh, thanks. And uh, so Christina, I yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I I just have one quick question. So uh, there is this task uh, task number nine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a question for Marion. Uh, so um, Marion, I understand this task involves uh, making changes in P4 compiler. Uh, I wanted to ask you: Does this also should this should this task also have a counterpart uh, for BMP2? I mean, the, the compiler can add the properties, but they also uh, it looks like also need to be processed. Yeah, I think we have a task. Uh, we have a task like that, and we are working on it together, compiler and BMV2. Or maybe this one is uh, for both. I don't remember. It uh, okay. It says uh, the. So there, uh, there is connection tracking in the simulator. So that's right here. Yeah, this one. This is about BMV2. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, did we answer your question, Saad? Uh, yes. Okay, and all right. Well, thanks, guys. Um, unless there's anything else. And it looks like Gerald dropped off. Um, okay, I'll stop the recording. I'll make it available.